Welcome to JHeart Model Works. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've posted a new video, but work and life have just gotten in the way. I have, however, finally gotten some bench time, so join me as we work on the interior for the Ravel 69 Chevy Nova Resto Mod. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. Here's our steering column. It's not bad. This is a sewing pin. And this is what that sewing pin looks like after I chuck it into a cordless grill and take some metal files and sanders to it to turn it into an improved turn signal stop. We we'll start by using an extra fine tip sharpie and marking around the original stop so that when I cut it off I'll know exactly where it was. We're also going to take our new and improved turn signal stop and we're going to mark it as well so we're going to have an idea of where to cut it and where we want it to end up. Now I marked where I wanted to stop. So when I go to cut it, I'm actually going to cut it a little bit long to give me a little bit extra that I can glue into the steering column. Now with the new camera angle, the camera gets in my way sometimes and I can't see what I'm doing. So I end up out of frame. What I'm just doing here is using a hobby knife and cutting off the old turn signal stop. We're using the dead center tool that I got from Scale Pro Shop to form a pilot hole to make this a lot easier to drill. Otherwise, trying to drill on this round surface would be difficult and likely would end up getting me stabbed with a drill bit. Once our pilot hole is started, we're going to start with a 0.4 millimeter drill bit. We're not wanting to drill all the way through. We just want to drill in maybe halfway, if that. We just want enough to glue in the new turn signal stop. Now, I don't know the diameter of the pins, so I started small and we'll just step through each of the bits until we get the pin to fit. I think I ended up at about 0.7 millimeters. We are not gluing this in yet, this is just a test fit. Now we're back to the dead center tool and we want to form another pilot hole on the opposite side of the stock. This is going to be for our ignition switch and it needs to be up on the collar. With our pilot hole done, we want to use a 0.6 millimeter drill bit to drill a hole for our 1.2 millimeter top studio rivet. And then we're going to use our sanders to clean up the column of any marks or any mold seams to get it nice and clean and ready for paint. Once back from paint, we're going to dip the very end of our pin into some CA glue. And then we're going to drop it into the hole that we drilled for it. We want to make sure that we get it into the correct side of the steering column. Now you guys know by now I have to edit a lot out to keep the videos fairly short. So what you don't see is me losing two of these tiny rivets and trying over and over and over to get one to finally slide into the hole without going sideways, pinging off into outer space, or the glue drying before I could get it in. So I'm looking at the original Chevy Nova steering wheel. I don't know about you, but I ain't feeling this. So I went to Colts3D.com and grabbed a file for a Momo steering wheel and printed it on the 3D printer and hit it with some paint. The file comes with a steering wheel and a connecting collar, which I painted in rubber black from Tamiya. Assembly for this is a no-brainer. Put a little glue on the back of the steering wheel and attach the collar. Then add some glue to the steering column and place and align the wheels so it's straight. I did have to drill the collar a little bit though so that it would fit snugly over the nub on the back of the steering column. Here's our completed steering column and I think we're off to a good start. There's a guy on eBay called Best Model Car Parts that sells these beautiful gauges for a ton of cars. But these aren't decals, they're a high resolution print on glossy cardstock so we're going to start on the dash by removing the gauge panel. To do this, we're going to start by drilling a hole in all four corners of the gauge panel to give us a starting point for our hobby knife to cut. Once we have our holes, we're going to use our hobby knife to very carefully start tracing a groove from corner to corner. We need to be extremely careful not to cut any other part of the dash like the top or the sides. This is a long, slow process, so the footage is sped up quite a bit. Take your time, don't rush this. Once I have the groove well established, I switch from the standard number 11 blade to a sawtooth blade to finish cutting out the panel. Next, we'll use a flat metal file to clean up the opening. 
We have quite a bit of rough edges and we need to take off quite a bit of material. You could use a sander or sandpaper, but a metal file will make quick work of the edges and won't clog up as much as a sander or paper will. Once we have the bulk of the material removed, just a quick little slide of the hobby knife a couple of times should finish it off. Next, using some very sharp scissors, we're going to cut out our gauges. Unfortunately, because I need to see what I'm doing, I end up drifting further and further out of frame. Our goal is to end up gluing them back behind like this, but that's too simple, so I'm not done yet. So next we're going to brush on an extremely thin layer of Elmer's white glue on the surface of our gauge and then we're going to glue that down to a sheet of clear acetate. Once we have it pressed down, we'll cut it off and we'll let it dry. Once it's dry, we're going to put a bit of Bob Smith Super Gold Plus Clear Part Safe Super Glue on the back of the gauges and we're going to glue down another small strip of acetate that I've painted flat black. This will give us a nice black background for the gauges. Once it's dry, we're going to cut the acetate assembly right up on the very top and bottom edge, but we are going to leave extra on the sides to make it easier to glue and line up. A quick dry fit looks really good, so now we can take the dash to the spray booth to get some paint on it. We are back from paint and we're going to add a little bit of super glue to the sides and the bottom of our frame. And I've left exactly enough acetate on the left side of the gauge assembly that if I just press the side right up against the inside of the dash, the gauge will line up perfectly. So we'll just press that into place and perfect fit. When the light hits it just right, it looks like it has that plastic lens cover over the gauges. Now we're going to use our mechanical pencil and some Vallejo black paint and we're just going to pick up some of these details, just these buttons on the bottom of the dash, the radio knobs, things like that. Using some Vallejo Silver, we're going to do the exact same thing and just very carefully pick up these lines for the sliders for the air conditioning controls. Paint didn't work out so well for the glove box button, so instead I'm going to use one of these 0.04 inch bolt heads from Protec. Out of frame, I added a tiny drop of super glue with this toothpick. Then I moistened the other side and just tapped it to the top of the bolt head and used it to place it right where I want it. The shifter isn't bad, but I'd like to clean it up a bit. This is also how you save it if your fat fingers tend to break shifters like mine do. So back to the sewing pins we go. We want to line the heads up and we'll make a mark where we want to bend. We'll then use some pliers to bend the middle pin into shape to match the shifter. Once we have our bend matching up nice, we're going to go ahead and make another mark on the bottom of where the shifter should end. Now we're going to use our display nippers or hobby knife and we're going to very carefully cut off the end of the shifter and try not to lose it. Now using our dead center tool we're going to form a pilot hole at the very top of the shift boot. And then we want to drill a 0.7 millimeter hole all the way through without stabbing ourselves or drilling into our finger. And we're not going to start out at 0.7. I think I started out at a 0.4 and just worked my way up the bits, but eventually I need a 0.7 to fit these pins. Now 
Now we're going to use our sponge sander and we're going to just gently sand to make sure there's no seams or mold lines or other marks on the head of the pen. Here we are back from paint. We did some candy red to try and match the body a bit. We're going to use some pliers and gently work the boot onto the pin. Now we push the boot up further than we want it to go. We're going to go ahead and add some super glue below the boot and then push the boot back down. This way all of our super glue is at the underneath where it won't be seen. And we'll just use some wire cutters to cut off the end of the pin. And then go search for the shifter. And here's our new and improved shifter ready to run. On eBay, there's a guy going by Best Model Car Parts. He sells fantastic gauges for pretty much all the muscle cars. These are not, however, decals. They're very high resolution prints on glossy cardstock. We have some gauges for the center console, so we're going to just cut these right up to the design and then glue them in with some Elmer's PVA glue. Those look really nice. Just a little dab of white glue and we're just going to press them home. If you get any excess, just clean it up with a damp cotton bud, not soaking wet or you could ruin your gauges. And here we have both sets of gauges installed on the center console. To wrap it all up, we're going to use some CA glue and we're going to glue our shifter into place. And here's our completed console. Front seats are in two parts, front and back, and we're going to go ahead and start by getting these glued together. We want to take some Tamiya Extra Thin, and we're just going to run it all the way around the seam on the entire seat. Now the sides are fine, that's a normal seam in the seat, but this headrest needs a lot of work. We'll start by sanding with our thinny sticks to try and get this as cleaned up as much as we can, but this isn't going to do the whole job for us. So it looks better, but it's not completely smooth yet. Our next step is going to be to mix up some Tamiya polyester putty and apply this to the headrest. To mix this, start by squeezing out a small line of white putty. And then you can just squeeze out another line of this orange hardener about the same length. To mix it, I'm going to use one of these old Tamiya metal paint mixer sticks. They're super easy to clean up when you're done. So when you get this properly mixed up, your color should be even and somewhat close to the color of the cap. Once we get it mixed up, we're just going to apply it generously to the top and sides of the headrest. Now some guys will tell you not to apply it really thick. It will take longer to dry and you will have a lot more sanding work to do, but I like to make sure that I get good coverage. Speaking of sanding, we're then going to go to town with our sanding sticks. This is going to take a lot of work to get this sanded clean. But when we're done, we should have just a very little amount of putty left, just filling that seam and making it completely smooth. Now, I am really liking the Tamiya polyester putty. I do have to buy it off of eBay. I haven't found it anywhere local. But this does not shrink back like the regular lacquer style putty does.
When we're done, this is pretty much all we're left with of the putty. It's just enough to kind of fill that gap and create a perfectly smooth transition. We are back for paint and it's time for some seat belts. As usual, we're going to use the buckles from Model Car Garage and we're going to use the tongues from Small Great Details. We're going to start with the tongues first as they're easier. And my first tip is to always cut your ribbon at a sharp angle. It creates a smaller point that you need to slide in through this tiny opening on this photo etch. Another tip is to leave the tongue on the photo etch fret. It's easier to handle this way. Now you may have to try several times. You don't see the 10 or 15 failures before I finally succeed. You just see me succeed. But once you do finally get it to pull through, go ahead and then cut the tongue off the sprue. Just fold your ribbon over so you don't cut the ribbon and then cut it right here at the back. Next, we're going to take a little bit of CA glue and we're going to put it right on the back of the tongue piece where the ribbon's going to fold over. I'm going to get a little bit on each side of the photo etch and then just fold the ribbon over so that it's even. We want it to be completely even. And once that glue is set, we can trim off the excess. Now we need to attach it to the seat. I'll place it roughly where I want it and then I'll hold it in place with a finger while I trim off the excess ribbon. We'll just tap a little super glue right here where we expect the ribbon to go and then press it down. Now I try not to use my fingers for this as the glue can seep through the ribbon and attach the ribbon to your finger. And then when you lift it off, you rip off the ribbon, the paint, everything, and just have a nasty mess. So I like to use a toothpick or something to try and press this down. Now I'm going to add another spot of glue where I want the belt to end. There's two things I'm not going to do here. Number one is I'm not going to buckle the seatbelt together. No one fastens seatbelts when they get out of their car. Number two is I'm not going to glue the belt down straight. To give the seatbelt a little more life, we need to crumple it a little, like they look like they're just laying in there. So give it a twist or a bend or maybe just a little bubble or two. We do want it to follow the flow of the seat. We want gravity to be there, but there can be a little bit of a lump here or there. See, it's not floating in the air, but it's not perfect either. It looks used. The buckles are a little trickier as they have two parts. And unfortunately, most of this footage is going to be out of frame. I've done these in the past, uh, the exact same style buckles on several of my other videos like the Chevelle. Feel free to check out my other videos to get a better view on how I do the buckles. Now, because of the nature of these buckles from Model Car Garage, one of them actually has to have some bending done to it. So I will go ahead and cut these off the sprue before I run the ribbon through them. Now, there's a front and a back, and the back has two little tabs on it that you need to bend over. So I'm going to use a photo etch bending tool and a nice sharp blade and just lift it up and bend it. You're supposed to bend it over so that it lays down flat to create the hole where the tongue should slide into. More often than not, I end up breaking these off and just gluing the two pieces together flat. It's honestly so small of a detail, most people won't notice it. Once you have them bent at about a 90 with the bending tool, you can just use some pliers to fold them the rest of the way over. And when it's time to put these on, you want to put the front of the buckle on first and then put the back of the buckle on so that when you fold it under, the fold will be on the back. 
and you'll stick a little glue on one or both of the metal pieces and then slide them together. Once again, we're going to place a little super glue on the inside of the fold, just right on top of that photo etch, maybe a little bit on both sides. And fold the ribbon over, and when it's dry, go ahead and cut off the excess. Once again, we're going to kind of hold this in place with our thumb, get it kind of where we want it to be. I'm going to place a little bit of glue down here at the base. And do what I just said not to do and use my fingers to press it down. And we're going to cut off the excess with hobby knife. Sometimes I cut before I glue, sometimes I cut after. It's really better to do it before you glue so that you don't risk cutting into the seat with a hobby knife. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue right here on the edge of the seat and kind of push this down because I kind of want it to lean forward a little bit. But I also want it to press in and I want it to follow the contour of that seat. Once that sets, we'll put another drop of glue right back here behind where the buckle is and then slide it back a little bit. This is going to create a bend in the buckle. And just give this belt a little more life. All right, but we never actually figure out how to hold these. Here are our finished seats with our nice seat belts. Notice they don't really go exactly the same direction either. Like one kind of goes across, one kind of points more towards the front. Just a little randomness. In our rear seat, now these definitely follow a specific pattern, so I recommend good references like bringatrailer.com. Here are our door cards, and they've got some really nice detail to them, but I really thought those window cranks could be improved. So I hopped into Rhino 3D, and I modeled and 3D printed some window cranks. These are actually for sale on my store at Colts 3D. I'll put a link below. Now first things first, we're going to use our display nippers to cut off the bulk of the current window cranks. Next, using our dead center tool, we're going to form a couple of pilot holes right at the center of the base of the window crank where it connects to the door. And we're going to use those pilot holes to drill some 0.6 millimeter holes in the door card. Now, when I modeled the window cranks, I gave them a 0.5 millimeter post at the base to make them easier to mount, you can just slide them in this hole and glue them in from the back. You'll see when we actually install them later. Our door cards have a really nice groove pattern detail. And our window cranks will sit slightly up off the surface of the door. So we want to either use our Tammy engraving tool or our hobby knife to rescribe these lines through where the old cranks were molded. We need to be very careful and make sure our lines are straight. It would be very easy to jump across, get over the lines, and make a real mess of this. Here you see where we just carried those lines through where that old handle was. Now, on the back, I kind of found it was a little easier to use the hobby knife and lay the blade down flat so that it kind of cut across while staying in the groove on both sides. It's kind of hard to explain, but it just kind of worked out a little better back here. 
Okay, now there is a section of a handle that's in a shallow spot in here. And what I did was I took a small chisel and I just went in and I cleaned out that hollow area so that it didn't look like it was standing up too much. Like I said, it's not something you absolutely have to do. You're not really going to notice it once the new window handles are in place, but I wanted it kind of cleaned out a bit. I did take a sander to the door cards a little bit to clean them up, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time with the sanders here. The next thing I'm doing is I'm using the engraving tool and I'm going around this handle to kind of open it up a little bit. It shouldn't actually go all the way to the door. I initially tried cutting under it with a saw blade and unfortunately I did some damage to the door. You can see there's a line on both of them right where that blade was rubbing. Back from paint and I went with a semi-gloss black some Tamiya Imperial Japanese Navy Gray, and some Zero Paints Ferrari Bordeaux Interior. Next, we're going to use our display nippers to carefully remove the window cranks from the, it's called an island, but it's pretty much the same as a sprue. I am going to go back in and re-drill my holes just to make sure that they didn't fill up with paint. We're going to carefully slide in our window crank right through the hole. Actually we're going to drop it and then search for it and try again. There it goes. Just do a little fiddling to kind of get it right where we want it. Hold it with our finger. We're going to apply some CA glue to the back side of the door panel. And we still have a few seconds to kind of wiggle this where we want it. And we're going to apply a drop of Instaset. Now I've moved my Instaset from the original container into one of these syringe bottles. And it really gives me a lot more control. I can just get like a drop or two come out of it instead of biting with the big bottle in the spray nozzle. I'm going to repeat the process for the rear window crank. We're just going to slide it in. Wiggle it around. and glue it in place. And here's our finished window cranks. I do like how these stand up off the surface and they cast the correct shadows unlike the original molded in pieces. So we're using some MIG ammo aluminum masking sheet. It's kind of like bare metal foil. And we're going to cut a small piece off and we're going to cover our door handles with it. I wanted to cut the door handles off and make new ones, but trying to cut them was actually damaging the door, so this is the least damaging option. Maybe we'll try again on another build. So like I said, we're just going to cut off a thin piece. We're going to press it down on top of our door handle. We use our tweezers to try and kind of line it up. Then we're going to start working in our place with our finger and then move on to one of these fine Tamiya cotton buds. They're soft so they don't mess anything up, but they're still very firm and they give us a good pressure to press down. And we just want to rub this down 
and kind of tuck it in as close to the surface of the store handle as we can get it. Now using our hobby knife and a brand new blade, we're going to trim up as best as we can and try to remove all the excess. Then we're just going to reburnish it down with our cotton bud. Now with our metal straight edge, we're going to cut a very thin strip of this. We're going to take our thin strip of metal foil and we're going to press it down onto these armrests right in this little groove. Then we'll take our hobby knife and just trim it off right there at the end. And repeat this process for the front armrest. Just work it down. Then trim it off. Once we've cut it off, we're going to use that fine Tamiya cotton bud and work this down into those little grooves. Get everything nice and burnished down flat. And that's how we handle the door cards. Now, as you can see, my settings have changed. I attended the first meeting of the Plastic Society of DFW since they closed down for COVID. Uh, we had this at Wild Bill's Hobbytown USA in Arlington. So the lighting isn't perfect. But it's not terrible. I had fun. I got to hang out with some friends. People I mostly only know online. I got to put some faces to people. And we're going to go ahead and glue our firewall into place. And then shortly afterwards we're going to realize that we really should have put our pedals on first. It was a little obnoxious trying to get the pedals to seat in. It would have been easier to have done it before I glued it into place, but this is what happens when you don't read the instructions. Next we're going to apply some glue for our center console. I have flocked this. I used some black flocking from Model Car Garage. I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue there. There's a little bit of glue added to the bottom of the center console as well. And just drop that right into place. So the meeting was a ton of fun. Got to meet a lot of guys. Um, hang out with people that I normally only talk to again on Facebook like Ruben. Um, so here I am, I'm just going around with a toothpick, applying some super glue to the edges of the rear seat. And then we'll just drop it into place. This doesn't need to be pretty. I'm just going to put a big glob at the base where the seats sit. There are some little tabs that stick up. Let's make sure I get a good amount of glue on those tabs and where the base of the seat is going to press. We want to make sure that these seats stay nice and firmly in place. The other thing we want to do is make sure that the square buckle goes towards the inside of the car. The door card was a little tricky. There are a couple of small little tabs and a little notches down here for lining up the door card. But the door card doesn't really positively locate on the front and back upright pieces. But after a little bit of fiddling, I finally got it into place. Now, before we can put our dashboard in place, we need to put our steering column in. 
and I did find the fit was a little tight. I did end up scraping it a little bit to try and open this up a little. But once we did, we just add a little glue, wiggle it into place, and then just made sure everything was straight. Now each of the door cards has a groove. We just want to go ahead and drop a generous amount of CA glue in this groove here. And then drop some more in this one over here. And then it should just drop right in. Just a quick bit of Insta set to lock it into place. And at this point, I thought I was done. Turns out I wasn't. Rusty McBride from Trailer Trash Customs was at the meeting and he gave me some speakers to put on the partial shelf. I took them home, cleaned them up, painted them with some Mr. Servicer 1500 black and a little bit of Outclad black chrome. I'm just going to go ahead and drop some super glue right on the bottom of these. And then I am going to use the stripes on the seats to kind of line these up. So if you can, guys, give Rusty and Ruben a check out of our Trailer Trash Customs. They do have some really awesome 3D printed resin stuff. They do speakers. They do entire frames for truck builds. They do all sorts of lowrider stuff. Absolutely awesome, guys. Absolutely awesome products. I will put a link down in the description box. So many links. And with that, this interior is finally done. And that looks awesome. I love the color choices I went with. I think they turned out great. Don't know how well they're going to be seen once we get the body on. It is going to be a little dark in there. But for right now, it looks awesome. I love the window cranks. I love the seat belts. Everything just kind of pulls together. And it really just fits this build. So that's going to wrap it up for the interior. I'm sorry it took so long to get a video out. It's been like, I think this is the third week. And it's been just driving me nuts that I haven't put a video out. Um, I'm not getting the bench time. I'm absolutely not getting enough quiet time to edit and do voiceovers. So it just is what it is. From here, I am going to go ahead and move on to the engine. The engine bay typically has the most mods on the build for me, so this might take a bit of time. We do have some great stuff coming up, though. We've got lots of Protect stuff. We've got some pulleys for Mr. Model. We have all sorts of goodies. So thanks, as always, for hanging out with me, and I will catch you guys on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comment section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comment section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.